Good morning, Ben here at Glide doing another short video for our introductory series. Today we're going to have a quick look at configuring Glide. So I have a screen open here which is an accounts workflow screen and in a different tab I have open the workflow editor. So we're going to see how these uh, changes you can make in here impact on your job card. A couple of key things, I mean this really is a strength for Glide, it's a really configurable system. We've had such a wide range of practice sizes, literally going from one user to 400. That throws up lots of challenges and the flexibility of our workflow engine has really resulted from that. We know it's really important to be able to factor in that important stage or important bit of information that or target that is important to you. And we have never come across two practices that have asked for the same thing, which just goes to show the the sheer variety out there. So obviously you've started a trial system. It comes with templates. So we have 10 workflow systems there by standard. They're all set up in a, in a fairly typical way. So for a lot of people that that could be fine. Um, you know, if you want to use the system just to kind of keep keep tabs on deadlines, the templates are going to do, uh, you know, going to do a perfectly good job. If you want to kind of get a bit more out of Glide, and really improve the firm's performance in those areas that are important to you and your clients, you'll probably want to do some configuration. Okay, so let's jump from here into the editor. First thing to, to kind of reiterate in terms of, you know, when people ask me, how can I configure Glide? I mean, it's, it's an obvious point, but workflow systems, you can have as many as you like. So you could uh, in, deactivate or delete all of these systems and just leave the one create a very nice simple interface just to focus on accounts and uh, corporation tax deadlines or you can have as many as you like so we, we try and incorporate everything we can think of into the template but people do go on and create other 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 workflow systems a quick reminder as well although we covered it on an earlier video that there are three types of system and the difference is all about when the jobs will pop up when they will automatically create first type of system is tax year okay so tax year systems you choose your date yeah you know, maybe kind of first of feb 6th of april and on that date every single client that is active for that system so i've just come onto the supermarket limited's client card if i click on tax returns we'll see they're active so if i don't want them to have a tax return i just change that to not active it's the only bit of info necessary for a tax year workflow to be created. Another thing to point out is that you can have more than one tax system. So for example, we have some clients in Ireland that deal with both Irish and the UK uh, deadline structures. That's absolutely fine. Uh, we also have clients in America that have various different tax year related deadlines in different states. That's all absolutely fine. Second type of system is the client trigger. So if I jump to say management accounts, uh, remember here to get the jobs to create, first of all, it has to be active. But because this is creating around a date that's specific to the client, the second thing you have to do is, and you only have to do this once, is you have to give the system the date. Okay. Uh, third type of system is manual, manually initiated, things like the ad hoc, the new client. That's simply where if you need to do one, you just go in and create the new job. Simple as that. So we've got three types of system and you can create as many of those as you like. But what happens thereafter? You know, the more common requests may be uh, there's too many stages here. There's not enough stages here. Uh, we need more buttons, target dates, that sort of thing. So this, this video will just give you a quick flavor of how we go about doing that. So. I'm in the workflow elements and first of all, uh, there's the client fields. So these fields actually appear, uh, not, not so much on the jobs, on the client records. So this is the permanent data, the custom fields that you have in your summary tab and then each system has its own area. They obviously designed to hold that permanent info. The reason they're relevant to talking about configuring the jobs is that you can have a trick we do quite often is we have regular staff member. So this is where, say if Bob 
prepares my accounts every year, you know, unless, unless he happened to be ill. Yes, yeah, so nine times out of ten, he's going to prepare it. What we then do is the preparer field on the job will default. So if we look in here, this is going to default to uh, being set on the client field. So there is some interaction. These fields can can hold can default to here. And if you change them on a job, you can get them to write back to the client field. So there's some interaction there. Obviously, for client fields, you can see the different data types we offer. So we've got date. Uh, we've got numbers, we've got yes, no's, we've got text, email address, website, staff, associations. You can have whatever staff associations you like. So you'll see that it comes default with partner, manager, preparer. We have people with you know up, upwards of 10 positions, tax manager, engagement principal, all sorts of things. Okay, so that's client fields. Now onto the job fields. So again, this is the custom data points. We're not yet into the concept of progressing through a workflow. These are the custom data points and they appear down in the bottom left. So this is things where when you're progressing through your accounts workflow, you might want someone to record a bit of info, perhaps the turnover, number of employees, anything really. And by having it on the job, you're recognizing that that data can be different each year, each quarter, each month, whatever it may be. Uh, another thing we use that for here is that we have a date box to say we've submitted accounts to Companies House. And that is, that's simply because we find that it's hard to know exactly when it will happen in the process. So we, on the template, have it in a date box and that then links to tick off the deadline. Various uses for those, and again they are configured in here. And we have the same data types available. Okay, next thing to look at are deadlines. So you can add deadlines and they will appear on this section in the right. Deadlines are actually, you don't have to worry about telling the system when the deadline is because Glide, because the system is purely for accountants, we program in how to calculate these deadlines. So you simply decide that you want it on your workflow. So there's not too much to say about those. Obviously they do calculate the funny first year deadline, an example of which we have there. Uh, which deadlines do we have is probably relevant so let's have a look we have a variety of uk deadlines and we have some the variety of irish deadlines as well so quite a lot going on and we're always keen to add to that if we've missed any then we get on to the, the probably the most interesting bit the job stages okay so when we're creating a stage what well, what info do we provide we tell it which subsystem it's on we put it in a group or a region, which I'll come back to in a moment. Uh, we decide where, whether it's visible on the, uh, the spreadsheet kind of reporting area, just because that can, that can save a bit of space. We, the milestone achieved, that is what have you achieved when you complete the stage. So that is what you see down the left here. And the stage is what is the state of the job whilst you're on that stage. Okay, we then give it an order couple of other settings to do with widgets and targets okay so clearly here this is where if you want more stages you can add more if you want less you can delete them and you can change the names really easy to do um, now important thing how do we tie all this together to create a process or a workflow actually before I come on to that I'm just going to put, jump onto the groups or regions so just to explain here every stage we have is in a region and that is simply to allow you know, those that want to see the big picture to have their widgets looking at regions so you can see here that just you know, really big picture stages and each of these could have 10 milestones within it so you know the kind of staff doing the work can see the each step they need to do and the management can see the big picture without any more effort being required okay so Coming on to the question of, you know, we have these buttons here to progress through workflows. How do we configure these? That is all done in a workflow. So the workflow works like this. And let's relate it back to this one here. So we are currently on the stage to complete and pass for review. So if I find that on the workflow, there it is. You'll see that we currently have one button set up, passed for review. And if we click that, it's going to move on to the stage awaiting review. So just to show in here, you have a description. That's what shows in the button. You have the longer description, which is what shows when you hover over. And you have where's it going from and where's it going to. So the way that you kind of 
the amount of flexibility shown here is that you can create as many buttons as you like. So if we did another one that goes from to complete and pass for review, let's say we want one that's, hmm, we're going to create an option to say, actually, we've decided there's still information missing. So I'm going to throw us back to the stage missing info requested. So now if I jump back here and refresh this page, you'll see we now have two buttons. So we can now say info is missing. And we're now on the stage to request missing info. So again, it's all about being really controlled and giving your users just the appropriate buttons. Uh, again, you know, a lot of systems will just have a list of stages and let you put a date in, but that doesn't actually convey the full picture. We think this is a really comprehensive way of doing workflow for accountants. If you look at this system, you'll know what's going on. Um, whereas with just putting a date and not having a kind of current stage or state, it's, it's a lot more difficult. So a couple of other things to show before we conclude this video. Back onto our workflow editor. You'll see at the top, by the way, that any job custom data points on the job and any deadlines <clears throat> do get added to the workflow. Coming down here then, let's find, where are we now, to request missing info. We've got workflow actions, so every button you have can have as many workflow actions as it likes. So this one, when that button is pressed, it's going to change the current holder. So that is the person holding the job here. And you'll see that it can change to any staff association or a specific member of staff or it can put it in the pool there's various things we can do at this stage let's just find this again so create a new action let's say we want to set a target and we're going to have a target for the final accounts being sent and I just need to put in the number of days so we're going to say after 20 days and it'd be after the execution date that means the day we press the button but you'll see that we can have a target being any number of days before or after the year end or yeah, date due just means year end quarter end weekend whatever it is uh, we can have it set after a one of those client data points sorry job data points so you could for example have a custom data point in the bottom left being meeting date and set your targets relative to that or you can have it relative to a deadline so just say look this target needs to be before the deadline We'll stick with on the day and we're saying we've got 20 days to get the final accounts out. Um, what we'll see, I'm just going to check which, which road I put that on. So that's on the missing information received. Okay, we already, we already have a target in there. That's okay, it's going to put our new target on there. So missing info received and you'll see now that's gone to the 7th of June. And um, I am recording this for your info on the 18th of May. Hopefully that adds up to being 20 days time. Uh, there's lots of things these workflow actions do. I think we'll see if we carry on. Let's get, to, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's get towards the bottom. Do, 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 do. Okay, so this is our final one and I've got some workflow actions on here to insist on um, some of my data points being completed. The reason I've done that is because I have these two deadlines, just coming back to the deadlines, you'll see that you can choose how they're completed, either by a completion of a stage or a date being entered. So that has to happen in order for them to get the green tick, and you really want your deadlines to get the green tick, because then they'll disappear off your dashboard. So I've got a workflow action on that road saying, look, and grey it out, block it out until they have filled in these dates. So we'll just do those two. And now I can say finalize. So that's kind of relates what you're seeing on here to how configurable it is. Hopefully you see that there are so many options here for what you can do and you really can have as much detail as you like. Final thing to point out is, um, you know, kind of if you're thinking, well, why, why do we have to have the workflow area here? Obviously, the main reason is that when you set up your stages, you're creating points for your workflow to be at. This screen then creates the buttons and says go from here to here so it's, it's impossible to predict that secondly it's because we can have as many workflows as you like so for example on your account system you could have a workflow called small clients 
you could then have another workflow called big clients and the big clients could have perhaps more reviews quality control reviews could have a you could have a workflow called um, important clients whereby the targets are much more much quicker you know because you're perhaps hoping to provide a quicker service so all of this can be duplicated over to another workflow or two three four workflows and what you then do on your client is it's not going to show because I only have one but if you have more than one workflow where it's active you will then have choose workflow and you put this client onto the workflow you want and any jobs that are created are then going to be on that workflow okay final thing to mention is we jump past subsystems uh, now this we only have the one there but we've got one example of having more than one subsystem which I'll quickly show you and then that will be the end of the video so new client system so this is onboarding a new client we've kind of broken this down into four mini processes some in-house things that have to happen setting up a standing order professional clearance and AML if we now have a look at one of these what it looks like I think we made one earlier actually yeah you'll see the benefits so this is often used in two scenarios so the first one is we often have accounts and corporation tax being different subsystems the reason being that that's relevant where you have different teams a team that does the accounts and a team that does the tax it means they can come in it keeps it on one job card and that reflects the fact that you know, to the client's perspective it's one thing it means that targets can be triggered based on the account states can kind of set a target for tax and vice versa and so on and so forth so multiple teams working on the same thing works well this one here this is actually set up for a firm that you know the onboarding process is probably done by one person but this reflects the fact that different elements can move at different times so you can't just have one list and one button so you know they can come in and go okay we've done the standing order mandate uh, and then perhaps before it comes back signed you need to say you've requested ID so this keeps you know gives you the opportunity to have the same controlled processes but it means that you can advance them at their own speed and like I say most importantly to, most importantly of all you could have four different workflow systems here this kind of keeps the system a bit tidier and it just means that you can say if you want to monitor turnaround get some reports off around turnaround this means we're recognizing this is one task in the clients perception you know or in your internal perception you know you're worried about have we onboarded to client X and you don't want to be running four different reports to find that out so I think that concludes uh, you know the kind of basic intro to customizing glide uh, we have you know kind of set up a lot of firms and we will you know it's whether you've got one two three users or 300 400 we're entirely confident this system can cater for your needs so um, please do contact details will be coming up on the screen now uh, if you're uh, no doubt thinking well can it do this can it do that do not hesitate to get in touch and we'll be happy to help out thank you bye